This is the Chapter 6 review of the most missed questions. Question 1. They want to know what value will be recorded for the building. Okay. In a basket purchase, the cost of each asset in the basket is determined by as a percentage of the basket's total appraised value. Total appraised value. One more time total appraised value. So, looks like uh, the building was 770 uh, and you divide that by the total of all these appraised items. So, the land was 259,000 plus the building, 2770, plus 511 for the equipment and you bought all this in a basket purchase. So, you add all together Total appraised value is one million five hundred forty thousand. Divide that by the seven seventy, of which is the appraised value of the building, and they want to know what will the building be recorded at. Now, you paid. Let's see what you paid. You paid uh, one million one hundred forty thousand uh, dollars, and um, the CABC paid two hundred forty thousand dollars and issued a note for the remaining cost. Okay, so. <clears throat> You take uh, that percentage, which is 770 divided by the appraisals, divided by the total appraisals, and you get 50%. Uh, basically, is what you're going to use as your percentage uh, that's going to go towards the cost. So, if you paid one million one hundred forty thousand dollars, 50% of that is going to go towards the cost of the building. So, 50% times one million one hundred. Forty thousand dollars is five hundred seventy thousand dollars will be what the building will be recorded at instead of its appraised value. Next question. They want to know uh, what amount uh, the amount the ABC will record for depreciation expense with equipment in the first year. Okay. First of all, you want to determine the cost of the equipment, and you do that by taking the land which was, uh, let's see, property cost, da, 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 we, we, and let's see, uh, ABC paid $490,000. The appraisal of each of these pieces were as follows. The land, the appraised value of the land was uh, five eighteen. The building was $1,540,000. Uh, the equipment was $1,022,000. The total appraised value of all these things that you bought was $3,088,000. Now remember, we're, tr we're trying to get to, we're going to get to eventually, what the depreciation expense is for the equipment in the first year. So, hang on with me there. Total appraised value of all the things you bought, and you take the equipment appraised value divided by the total appraised value, and you get 33%. Uh, that's how that relates to the total appraised value. The property cost us uh, one million eight hundred five thousand dollars. So, the amount you're going to assign to the equipment will be thirty-three percent of that, which would be five hundred ninety-five thousand six hundred fifty dollars. Okay, so now you've got the assigned value of the equipment, five ninety-five six fifty, and then you're going to take uh, that five ninety-five six fifty. Subtract off the salvage value because it says right here it says um, we have a salvage value of eighteen thousand dollars, and this is an unusual situation. But you might see this is a test question, so like I said, if you do, I don't want you to trip up over it. So it says assuming that ABC uses units of production method when depreciation equipment when depreciating equipment, ABC estimates that the purchased equipment uh, will produce one million and ninety thousand units over its five year life and they produced uh, 274,000 units uh, of, of, with the equipment at the end of the first year. Uh, most companies don't use units of production, but some do, so we'll go over how this, to see how this works. So when you've got a units of production method depreciation type of calculation to make, then you take the cost of the equipment, which you figured out first, subtract off the salvage value, and what's left is the amount you can depreciate. Now, that now is going to be divided by the total units that they think that they estimate that this unit that this particular piece of machinery can make, which is 1,090, and you'll get a cost per unit. 
you can depreciate, which would be point zero point five three zero zero. Uh, you want to carry this out to at least three or four places so you can get a more accurate answer. So I've carried it out to four places here. And then you just multiply this times the number of units they produced in the first year, which is 274,000. And you'll get the amount you should be depreciating from for this machine in the in year one. Next year, whatever the amount of units you make, multiply that times that same uh, depreciation per unit, and you'll get a, the second year's depreciation, and so on and so on. Let's go to the next question. What is the capitalized cost of land and the new building, respectively? So, looks like um, we've got uh, something that you need to be aware of, first of all, which is kind of a rule of thumb, which is the cost of property, plant, and equipment includes the purchase price of the asset and all expenditures necessary to prepare the assets for its intended use. Let me repeat that. When you're buying something like property, plant, or equipment, you should include the purchase price, of course, and anything that, that is going to be necessary to get the asset ready for its intended use. So here we go. Uh, the purchase price of 770 right, plus the attorney's fees, uh, that was that's something you can't avoid. So that's attorney real estate attorney fees, which is ten thousand five hundred, plus the cost <clears throat> to demolish the old building, uh, which was sixty four sixty nine four hundred, that's called raising cost, I think it is, minus anything you get from the old building, like uh, for example, there was a building a long time ago around here called Gabe's Restaurant. When they when they tore it down, they kept the statue of Gabe's, and I believe it's in some rental place off of uh, Burlow Boulevard somewhere. But if they sold that, that statue and got money for it, that is reducing the cost of this item. So in this case, they salvaged some stuff in the old building. $7,500, that reduces the cost. And let's see, anything else? Um, that's it. The cost of the, of the land, then, and these all go in the cost of the land. Demolishing old building, it goes into cost of the land, just like salvage from the old building, that goes in the cost of the land. Now they want to know the cost of the land and the cost of the new building. So I'll just give you the cost of the land first of all. Now let's do the cost of the building. <clears throat> the building had a construction cost of looks like um, one million excuse me, nine hundred and twelve thousand dollars, which came from right here. Cost of the new building nine hundred twelve thousand dollars, plus any architect fees, which were seventy three thousand dollars that goes in the cost of the new building and that's the cost of the new building so keep it separate the land these th kind of things come out or add to to the purchase price of the land and in this case the only thing that was on here that related to the building was the architecture fees next one number 5a here it looks like uh, they want to know the the amount of cost recorded in the asset account would be what all right so um, Again, this rule, which is the cost of plant, uh, property, plant, and equipment, includes the purchase price of the asset and all expenditures necessary to prepare the asset for its intended use. So let's see here. We buy this machine. It has a list price of $100,000. And so we'll put that down first. Then we'll subtract off a 2% discount if we were able to take the discount, which I think we will here. It says in just a second we will. So that comes off the top, which would be 2% off that, uh, that list price. Then we'll add in freight because that's one of these things that's, a, that's a necessary to prepare the assets for intended use. And also any testing or installation costs. So it says up here that ABC paid $7,500 to have, in, have the machine installed, which would be that, uh, and also uh, part of that was in, in installing and testing the machine. Now, uh, let's see about insurance costs to protect the asset from fire and theft. Normally, you know, first of all, then we've got the total cost here when you add those together, 110, 700. And the insurance is not really part of the cost of the machine, it's just part, of, it's an ordinary expense that you expense every year on the income statement and not really considered something that's ready to get it to, to get it ready for its pair, its use for intended use. So this all comes before you actually start using it. This insurance cost is something that incurred you incurred after you started using the machine. So it shouldn't be included in the cost. Next one. Uh, they want to know 
the cost machine. So again, that same rule, I'm going to go over that again, but again, it's something that, like I said, it's necessary to prepare the asset for its intended use. Start with $82,000, which was the list price of the machine. And see, the company paid cash for the machine, therefore, it was allowed a 5% discount. So you start off a 5% discount. Other costs associated with the machine were transportation costs, $2,500, sales tax paid, $5,520, and installation cost of $1,600. So transportation, sales tax, and installation. Uh, now, routine maintenance is something that goes on after you've already put into the use, so you don't count that. Uh, and that's $2,400. So the cost of this machine will be put on the books at $87,520. And again, like I said, that routine maintenance occurs after you've already got it going. So you don't use that as a cost. Next, they want to know, in this problem, the allocated the uh, cost allocated to land. Okay, so if we bought something here, we paid a million dollars for it, for uh, this basket purchase of land, building, and office furniture, and that's what we paid a million dollars. An appraiser provided the following estimates of the market values of these assets, and these are just uh, estimates here, appraisal values of 176 for the land, building 682, and uh, furniture was 242,000. All right, so you take that appraised value of land of 176, and you divide it by the total appraisals of the land and the building and the furniture, and you get that the land's portion of that's 16%. Then you just multiply that 16% times what you actually paid, and you're going to allocate 160, uh, 160 thousand uh, dollars, and that's going to be what's going to be put on the books. The land will be put on the books for. Next one. They want to know the amount of net income or loss appearing on December 31st, year three income statement. All right, so let's go back and see what we got in the problem here. So first step is determine the cost of the equipment, and so the equipment cost. Let's see here. Uh, this company issued stock, $27,000 cash. Uh, they purchased office equipment for $15,100. Okay, so we'll put that down. Okay. Equipment was delivered under terms FOB shipping point, and the transportation cost was $1,200. So you're going to add that transportation cost in because it was something that was ordinary and necessary to get that equipment ready to use. So that goes in as, a, as the cost, part of the cost. So the total equipment cost uh, is 16.3. Now, um, they want to know what's the net income uh, from year three. Okay, so this is you bought the equipment in year one, right? So now uh, we're going to have a depreciation amount. We're going to take each year on this equipment. So we're going to take the cost, which was 16.3 minus a $5,600 salvage value, which is up here. It says the equipment had a five-year life and a, a useful life and a $5,600 expected salvage value. Salvage value is what you think the equipment will be worth after its use life is over with. That's what you think you can sell it for after you finish using it after the five years. It's just a guess, but you have to put down something. So when you take this cost minus the salvage value, you get and divide it by five years. And by the way, that cost minus salvage value is what's called the depreciable amount of the asset. That's all you can depreciate on an asset. Divide that by five years, and you'll have depreciation every year, assuming straight line depreciation, of $2,140 every year depreciation expense. So um, now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring depreciation up to the point of sale because it looks like uh, year three, okay. Uh, Assuming that the office equipment was sold on December 31st of year three for $8,500, that's something that's going to go into our calculation for net income. So, like I said, the first thing you do when you sell something is you bring depreciation up, in this, in this case, bring it up to the point of sale, which was uh, December 31st, year three. And so we've had three years worth of depreciation at a cost of $2,140 a year times three and we'll subtract that from the cost to get what's called the book value of this machine. 
And so that means the book value of this machine was the cost minus depreciation. And so it has a book value at the end of year three of two thousand, excuse me, $9,880. So we're going to take the proceeds that we got from the machine because we, we sold this machine on December 31st for $8,500. And that $8,500 is going to be compared to the book value. So if it's on the books for ninety-eight eighty and we sold it for $8,500, that means we took a loss on this machine for the difference. And that loss will be $1,380. And that's going to go on our income statement as something that's going to help us determine net income. So now <clears throat> it's time to do year three's income. So we'll take the revenue we made in year three, which is $16,600 right there. We says we have uh, $16,600 cash revenue, and we incurred expenses of ten five, And we'll also subtract off depreciation for that year, which was twenty one forty. And then we'll also record the loss on the sale of that equipment uh, for thirteen eighty, dollars And all these will combine to make our ending net income for year three, which will end up being a net income in this case of twenty five eighty. That was a tough problem. Let's go on. Uh, the next one they want to know what's the annual amount of depreciation expense for each of the remaining years for this piece of equipment. So <clears throat> how do you make this calculation? Well you take the book back at the time of revision. Uh, minus the new salvage value and divide that by the remaining life. That's how you make the calculation, but let's go back up here and look at the equipment. First of all, we bought. You find the original depreciation. So you got the cost of this machine, which we bought a machine on January the 1st. Very convenient. Been January the 1st. Could take a whole year of depreciation for $106,000. Uh, the equipment's got a five year life and a salvage value of $15,000. So subtract off the salvage value from the cost and divide that by the useful life which was in this case five years and that means every year we have depreciation of eighteen thousand two hundred dollars now it says here that at the beginning of year four this is a five-year life equipment now right five-year life at the beginning of year four ABC revised the expected life to eight years so if we want to find the annual depreciation from this point on, from year four on, we're going to have to make a depreciation revision calculation. So like I said, step one is to bring the book value uh, to the point of revision, which was year four, minus the new salvage value, if there's any, uh, and it looks, in this case there's not, divide it by the new remaining life. So we will take the book value at the time of revision, which will be, uh, we'll find that, which would be 106 minus three years worth of depreciation at $18,200 a year. And that means the book value of this equipment, that is, the book value means cost minus accumulated depreciation. So cost minus the accumulated depreciation would be book value is 51.4 at the time of revision. So that goes right here minus any new salvage value because it could change. It doesn't in this problem, but it could. So it'll be uh, revised depreciation will be the book value of 51.4 minus the salvage value, which it didn't change any, so leave it alone. 51.4 minus 15,000 divided by five years means our new uh, depreciation from year four on will be $7,280. Okay, next we're going to have this problem which wants us to figure out what would be the book value of the asset on year one, excuse me, <clears throat> January one, year five. So first of all, step one, you determine the original depreciation. So we'll do that. Take 66,000. So we bought this, uh, we spent $26,000 on this, uh, on asset to improve its quality. The asset has been purchased on January the 1st, uh, $66,000, has $18,000 uh, salvage value, and has a six-year life. Uh, okay, so we've got uh, the 66000 minus the salvage value, 
divided by the six year life means the original depreciation is going to be $8,000 a year. Step two, determine the book value at the time of the improvement. Well, we spent, in year two, we spent $26,000 on this asset to improve its quality. So the book value at the beginning or at the time which we did this, which was year two, will be as follows. $66,000 cost minus one year worth of depreciation, which is uh, $8,000, means that the book value at the time we made this $26,000 uh, improvement to this machine is $58,000. Step three, determine the new amount of depreciation. So we'll take the 58000 which is the book value at the time we made the change, or the improvement rather, plus the $26,000 worth of uh, <clears throat> improvement cost, called the capital expenditure, minus depreciation of 18, minus salvage value rather of $18,000, all that's combined and you divide it by the remaining life. Since this happened one year after we bought it, it has a remaining life of five years, and it looks like the uh, uh, new depreciation after we made this improvement is going to be $13,200. Okay, and then the next thing we're going to do, what would be the book value of the asset uh, on January the 1st of year five? Okay, it would be, we can just refigure this all again, we have a machine that cost us uh, $66,000 originally, and then we added $26,000 to that to get the total value of the machine, which would be $92,000, 66 and 26. And we'll subtract off depreciation for each of these years all the way up till we get to year five. So first year depreciation was the original depreciation of $88,000, so we'll subtract that off. And then year two, since we have did that improvement, our new depreciation amounts 13.2, so year one is 8,000, year two, three, and four will be 13.2, and that's a total depreciation we're taking away from the cost to get the book value on January 1st, 2000, uh, excuse me, January 1st of year five of $44,400. All right, so. By the way, uh, when we're finished with this little uh, video today, I'm going to have free food that I can send out to all of you. Uh, if you just give me your addresses, I'll be happy to send this out to you. Uh, after class, like I said, I'll be giving away a three-piece chicken dinner. So if you can email me your, your physical address, I'll have DoorDash send this to you. Uh, no charge, no problem. Just, you know, just make sure that you... Uh, Tip the folks when you when they get it here. So here's the three piece chicken dinner you're gonna get. Let's go on. This will be our last one for the day. They want to know the amount of expense shown on the income statement and the amount of cash outflow from operating expenses uh, for this equipment situation. So here we go. First of all, determine depreciation expense for year one. So we had the ABC company purchase office equipment that cost $5,900 cash on January the 1st. And so the equipment has a estimated life of five years and a salvage value of $600. Subtract the salvage value from the cost and divide what, what that is by five. And that will be depreciation each year of $1,060. Now, uh, the $1,500 cash flow to purchase the office equipment is an investing activity and that's how it goes on a cash flow statement. But they want to know uh, the amount of expense shown on the income statement at the amount, excuse me, and the amount of cash outflow from operating activities shown on the cash flow statement at the end of the year, uh, which would be assuming a straight line depreciation. Okay. Uh, so, outflow of cash from operating activities. Well, depreciation expense goes on the income statement and it goes on there as an expense. But, this is kind of a trick question. It's not really a trick question. It's just to see if you understand something that you should have read about, which is depreciation expense does not require, does not require 
any cash. So it's not an operating activity. Depreciation is not a cash flow activity. And that's the answer. I believe we're finished here. Let me see. I believe we're finished. If we are, then uh, good luck on this.